who shot and wounded an 11 year old boy in the child's home should be fired. Attorney Carlos Moore says Adrian Murray, who is black, was shot in the chest early Saturday in Indiola. Moore says the child's mother asked her son to call police because of an intruder in their home. Moore says after she told officers the intruder had left, an officer yelled for anyone else in the house to come out, and that's when Adrian was shot. The child returned home Wednesday after being hospitalized five days for a collapsed lung, lacerated liver, and fractured ribs. For a second time this spring, the Pope is sick. He's so sick, he's canceled his meetings. The Vatican press office will only say that it's due to a fever. Pope Francis, who is 86 years old, apparently looked well enough yesterday while participating in a live stream event featuring an international education network that he founded. This past March, Pope Francis spent a few days in the hospital where he was treated for bronchitis. Scientists say artificial intelligence helped them develop a new antibiotic to fight a dangerous type of drug-resistant bacteria. This new antibiotic controlled the growth of a deadly superbug often found in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. They used AI technology to sort through thousands of potential compounds to locate the few with the most promise, which significantly cut testing time. Once they developed this new antibiotic, they found it attacked the superbug on lab mice while not killing beneficial bacteria in the gut or in the skin. There's no word on when human trials will take place. This next story is pretty inspiring. A man who was told he would never walk again after a motorcycle crash is now back on his feet thanks to an experimental implant that he has in his spine and his brain. Herkin Oskam was paralyzed, unable to take a single step after his spinal cord injury more than a decade ago. Now technology is turning Oskam's thoughts into actions. Electrodes implanted over his brain collect the signals from the region that controls movement. And then a computer analyzes them to predict how he wants to move, then sends the messages to electrodes in his spinal cord. And that allows him to make these movements. When I was there just for the first day when we were pre-programming the, the stimulator with the brain implant, I thought that he would only execute slight movements at the very beginning. But he was so fast that the very first day we asked him to stand up and to do a few steps and it worked. And all the team G was not here, unfortunately. He thought it would happen later. And uh, so we were all in tears. Don't you love it when that happens? Better than expected. He was the first participant in a clinical trial for this technology. Researchers are hopeful about the future possibilities of this. If you plan on going somewhere and you haven't filled up your tank yet, you can expect to pay a bit more at the pump. Gas prices almost always tick up in the days ahead of a Memorial Day holiday, but this year things aren't that bad. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of gas is only up four cents from last week. That's because even though demand is up, oil is still trading in the low 70s per barrel. All this is Memorial Day road trips are expected to be up 6 percent from 2022. Let's take a look outside with live cam. We uh, are still watching a storm system to our north, but I don't even think this one's going to shave us or clip us as the one yesterday did. Yep, this one looks to be taking more of an easterly track, so it does look to stay north of our area. I think for the most part throughout the remainder of this Friday, it's going to be pretty quiet here in San Antonio and surrounding areas, but still a bit warm as we head into the afternoon. Highs are headed for the upper 80s. Let's get you a look at those current conditions outside right now. Yes, we do have some clouds in place, still a few peaks of sunshine. I think for the most part, that's going to be the, the be the theme as we head into the next few hours. 80 degrees right now feels like 82 a dew point of 66 which is how we measure the moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere humidity not overly oppressive per se but it is noticeable and that also is going to be the trend over the next few days here in town I did mention upper 80s in store later this afternoon and then if you're stepping out for any of those evening plans around 85 degrees by 6 p.m. and then falling into the low 80s and eventually into the upper 70s later tonight for the most 
most part tomorrow and into Sunday here in town. Not a whole lot of issues when it comes to rain. I think tomorrow evening in our far western counties, we may need to monitor for a few pop up isolated showers. We'll introduce that 20% potential into the back half of the weekend. And then as we head into Memorial Day on Monday, that's when that next disturbance moves through and some hit or miss storms, not for everybody, but some passing scattered storms certainly possible. And then those isolated chances continue each day for the most part to behind that. So we'll get you another full look at future cast to get you all the details, what we can expect in the days ahead coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Mia. A local high school graduate is not letting anything get in the way of her dreams. How the athlete plans to compete at the Olympic level. Being born with cerebral palsy did not stop this Northside ISD Stevens High School senior from going after her dreams. Those dreams were to be in the Olympic Games. Sarah Costa shows us how her big dream began to take shape with a simple game of tag. No dreams too big, no dreams too small. Stevens High School senior Alicia Mears doesn't sweat the small things. She is focused on the big goal, making it to the Paralympics next year in Paris for track and field. It's something she's been training for since she started competing when she was five years old. But it wasn't until a game of tag in elementary she realized she was different. I didn't see myself as having a disability until fourth grade. She noticed all the other kids were running and she was hopping on her crutches. Crutches she had used her whole life being born with cerebral palsy. CP is a neurological condition that my brain doesn't tell my muscles what to do. She says her CP is just an what, obstacle, what like, but doesn't like to view it as a disability. Uh, I always say disability, but like when I like write it out or type it out, I always put dis in parentheses and then ability. I love that. Like, there is no dis, it's just ability, because like we all have different abilities. One of those abilities, extreme drive and positivity. Any workout that I'd plan, you know, for her, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and I try to think of the hardest thing possible, and she's like, yeah, I got this. Stevens High School track and field coach Tracy Hessen says that attitude noticed by her peers. And there will be kids that come out of, her way, out of their way to go and talk to her, give her a fist bump and say, good job. So uh, to say that she's ins an inspiration, that just really goes without saying. That hard work paying off with results, placing second in shot put at UIL State and taking home a gold, silver, and two bronze medals at the U.S. Paralympic Track and Field Championships earlier this year. And next year, she'll be competing as a Division I athlete at Arizona University for track and field. Her athletic ability can take her to that level, that highest level of the Olympics. I will not doubt it. If I turn on my TV and there she is, I, I think that is definitely going to be in her future. Alicia says she hopes all of her hard work doesn't just pay off at the international level, but more importantly, that awareness is raised for all para athletes, that their hearts and minds aren't any different than anyone else's. We're not that different when you think about it. Like you play sports, we play sports. Like, you like watching TV, we like watching TV. You like movies, we like movies. Like, we definitely have a lot in common. Sarah Costa, <laughs> KSAT 12 News. I like that. No diss, just different ability. Another great graduate we're highlighting today is a New Braunfels High School student. 18-year-old Sierra Delgado has been participating in cheerleading since she was only four years old. But her life changed when she received bad news from doctors after she started feeling some pain in her neck her freshman year. I was diagnosed with acute T-cell lymphoblastic leukemia, so I can no longer cheer anymore or really do anything physical. But she was determined to get back on the cheer mat. Hear about her journey to cheer captain right now on KSAT.com. The man in charge of the U.S. Census, a San Antonio native, getting an honorary degree from San Antonio Colleges, Robert Santos, the director of the Census Bureau. But he began his academic career as a student at the Alamo College nearly a half a century ago. At the San Antonio College's commencement ceremony, Santos was praised for his public service and contributions to society. Santos says he was very surprised by the honor. 
Outside with Live Cam, beautiful day. If you're traveling outside of San Antonio, it should be okay. If you're coming into San Antonio, ooh, you don't know what you're in for. It's going to be absolutely fantastic Memorial Day weekend. It's not going to be too shabby. That's right. Again, we'll monitor for a couple of widely scattered storms by Memorial Day itself on Monday. But other than that, just warm over the next few days with daytime highs in the mid to upper 80s. Speaking of which, earlier this morning, we had an official low of 71 here in town, two degrees above where we should be for this time of year. So far, we're at 80 degrees officially over at SA International. Highs are headed for the upper 80s, close to maybe just a few degrees below the average. We'll get you another full look at that Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up after the break. Mia Montgomery in for Justin Horn today, able to give us the good news. Great news, really. It's not going to be a bad Memorial Day weekend. That is for sure. As we get into Monday, as we've been talking about, we do have the potential to find some widely scattered storms out there. Not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be a washout of a day. But if you have any outdoor plans on Monday, keep them as of right now, but maybe have a backup plan B option should you briefly need to move them inside if we can find a couple of rumbles out there on the radar. So here is the latest pass here at our Memorial Day weekend forecast in San Antonio. Temperature wise, we're going to start off the mornings in the upper 60s, even near 70, especially by Sunday morning and then into the afternoons tomorrow and into the back half of the weekend. Partly cloudy skies, a mix of sun and clouds, daytime highs in the mid to upper 80s, close to where we should be for this time of year. And then into Sunday, we'll put that 20% potential for an isolated shower or two to pop up. And then as we head into Sunday night and a especially into Memorial Day itself. That's when we see that low pressure system arrive and we've got about a 40% potential for Memorial Day in San Antonio. Let's take a look at the radar right now. You can see we are pretty quiet across South Central Texas and I think for the most part we will stay that way throughout the remainder of this Friday, but we still have that pesky Northwest flow in place, so we'll still keep eyes on the radar for you today just to be on the safe side. In to tomorrow, this big blue H high pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere is going to move over the region, but it's going to be weakening a little bit as it does. So then as we head into Memorial Day, that slides eastward and an area of low pressure that disturbance then follows in its footsteps. So that's what could spark up that potential to find some storms out there on Monday. Here's the latest here on your future cast again throughout the remainder of this afternoon and evening a pretty quiet and dry here in our area and that's going to be the case for most of us into Saturday as well. Still Saturday evening. This is a snapshot around 6 p.m. So dinner time across our far western counties near Del Rio stretching over to Eagle Pass. Sure, a few isolated showers to a stray storm certainly possible. Then as we head into the early morning hours of our Sunday, so Saturday night and Sunday morning, maybe a few more across our far western counties. We've got that 20% chance in place for the central zone here on Sunday and then into Monday. There comes that disturbance with that 40% potential for some hit or miss storms. So needless to say, just check back in on the forecast here over the next few days. We'll continue to get you the latest as more data comes in. Temperature wise right now, we are in the 70s and 80s across the region. 85 in Pleasanton, 82 in Uvalde, currently 77 in Kerrville and 75 over in Rock Springs up into the hill country. This afternoon, daytime highs climbing into the upper 80s, around 87 here in town. Then as you're stepping out for any of those evening plans, 84 by 7 p.m., 77 by 11 p.m. It could potentially reach the low 90s across our far southwestern counties. Forecast high around 93 in Catula, 91 in Carrizo Springs. Closer to Bear County here, a neighbor.
neighborhood view, 88 in Lavernia, 86 in Seguin, 86 over in Lake Hills as well. Some interesting stats for you in terms of our rainfall since May 1st. Over three and a half inches have been recorded over at SA International, which is the official climate site for San Antonio. That brings our total since January 1st to over 11 and a half inches. So good news there. Again, mostly dry tomorrow and really into Sunday too. We'll keep eyes on a few passing storms possible there into Monday with some isolated rain chances then following. We're going to take a step aside. We'll be right back after the break. Hello everyone. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Ford announcing they're working with Tesla to give current and future Ford owners access to 12,000 Tesla charging stations with the use of an adapter that's set to start next year. Additionally, the next generation of Ford electric vehicles will come equipped with Tesla-style charging ports, allowing them to use the charging stations with no adapter needed. Meanwhile, Virgin Galactic completed its first successful spaceflight in almost two years yesterday. The Unity 25 mission, manned by two pilots and four crew members, was planned as the company's final test flight before launching commercial service next month. And in a new ruling yesterday, the Supreme Court limited the Environmental Protection Agency's power to protect the nation's wetlands from pollution. In a 5-4 decision, the court ruled that the regulatory powers created by the Clean Water Act only apply to wetlands with a, quote, continuous surface connection to protected bodies of water. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Pachado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Just in time for the holiday weekend and your summer barbecues, our own Mark Austin visited Snow's Barbecue, taking part in brisket camp to learn the ins and outs of good barbecue. He says your grilling will go next level if you remember, among other things, that it takes repetition and rest to reach barbecue greatness. Right now on KSAT.com, you can take a look at Mark's experience and read what experts say are four golden rules for preparing top-notch brisket so you can impress your family and friends this Memorial Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, we need an explanation, right? As to why they're... What that hot potato thing, thing was yeah. and Santa and George Strait. <laughs> Got you thinking, didn't Crossing we? Crossing the screen. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We'll explain that in a second. Mm -hmm, because there's going to be a whole lot of magic on the show today. <laughs> yes, indeed. And magician Simone Turrington, who's at the Magician's Agency this weekend, is joining us. Got a little card trick here, I huh? do. So I have three cards. I have a jack, an ace, and another jack. Now, uh, the ace of spades is a very show-offy card. You know, it's got that big pip. It just wants everyone, look at me, look at me. So look what happens if I just take that ace of spades out. I'm going to sandwich it between the two jacks like that uh -huh. and now it doesn't like that any other card would be happy there but not the ace of spades but if i give it a little shake like that it's like look at me look at me it just it's just not happy unless we're staring at it okay that's amazing <laughs> thank you something else is amazing is roy allen and what do you have here this looks delicious we are tasty balls and more yeah. we have potato balls today and it's not just potatoes, but there's uh, surprises there's out. In it, oh, no, there's right? not just potatoes. This is the hidden gem of San Antonio. It was, we take everything that you love to eat every day and we compact it into a ball and come out with something delicious. All right, we are going to be tasting those. And around our carnival hall, our dear friend is here. Hey. And oh my we, goodness. We continue with the magic. We've got a magical dish for you today. So yeah. it's different. And yeah. it's all because you are starting what? What talent well, night coming up? Well, we have a talent night coming in on June 1st at Mi Familia. All right, and no matter what you can yeah. do, maybe it's magician, magic, maybe it's singing, acting. maybe it's something else. How about some ice cream? We are going to show you a great new ice cream place in town. Plus, we have a whole list of all the fun things that you can do this weekend. Long oh, Memorial Day weekend yes. coming up. So if you were going to be in the talent show, what would your talent be? Um, I don't know. Dancing, maybe? She was a professional <laughs> dancer at one I time. <laughs> that and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. <laughs> 